The Illuminati is a term that stirs the imagination, evoking visions of mystery, power, and conspiracy. Originating in the Enlightenment period, the Illuminati referred to a real historical group, the Bavarian Illuminati, founded on May 1, 1776. Over the centuries, the idea of the Illuminati transformed into a far-reaching conspiracy theory that suggests a covert group of global elites that controls or aims to control the world. This theory posits that this secret society influences every major event and trend in world politics, economics, and culture, working towards a new world order. According to conspiracy theorists, the Illuminati's goals include the establishment of global governance, a one-world religion, and centralized control of the world's economic systems. These goals are suspiciously close to the goals of the Antichrist, whose rule and reign can be seen in the Book of Revelation. As foretold in the Book of Revelation, the Antichrist will create a one-world government, a one-world monetary system, and a one-world religion. The Illuminati conspiracy theory is vast and multifaceted, with numerous variations and offshoots. It incorporates a mix of historical facts, speculation, and imaginative fiction, making it difficult to pinpoint a single coherent narrative. The theory has been further complicated and popularized by its presence in modern culture, appearing in books, movies, music videos, and online forums. Symbols associated with the Illuminati, such as the Eye of Providence, seen on the reverse of the Great Seal of the United States, and references to goats or Baphomet, have been interpreted by some as evidence of the Illuminati's pervasive influence in our world. Just about every person who is thrust into the public limelight at one time or another is accused of being a part of the Illuminati, from celebrities to politicians, to business leaders, to actors, to musicians, to sports stars, all have been accused of being part of this secret society. These accusations often rely on interpretation of symbols, gestures, or certain events as proof of Illuminati affiliation. As followers of Christ, we're called to navigate the complexities of this world with discernment, guided by the light of the gospel. The scriptures offer us profound wisdom in this regard. John 17, 16 reminds us, They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. This verse speaks directly to our condition as believers, called to be in the world, engaging with it, yet not allowing it to shape our identity or dictate our fears. In the context of our discussion, whether the Illuminati is real or not, or whether a different secret society runs the world, or a secret group of individuals that the world has never seen runs the world, it is important to note and to remember that God is in control, not any group of people, and not any secret society. No plan or scheme developed by any group of individuals or rulers could in any way prevent, or even hinder, God's sovereign plan for the world. The Bible is clear. You are to fear only God. Matthew 10, verse 28. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. It's time for us to redirect our fears, to shift our focus from the created to the creator, from the finite to the infinite. To fear God is not to cower in dread, but to stand in awe of his majesty, to recognize his omnipotence, and to surrender to his divine will. To fear God is to understand he is in a class of his own. To fear God is to know he alone controls the trajectory of this world, and nothing happens without his permission. Even the devil and all his wickedness, even the devil and all his demons, are not able to operate outside the area God has allowed them. There is no one in the League of God, for he is the consuming fire. He is not some old grandfather. He is a consuming fire. He is not a Santa Claus-looking individual like you see in these paintings and drawings. He is a consuming fire. He is the Ancient of Days. There is a reason why no man has seen God and lived. He is far above what the human mind can even conceive or understand. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, 
says the Lord, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. If you think you have God figured out, you are in trouble. You cannot figure out God. We barely are able to figure out human beings. What on earth makes you think you can figure out a being that has no beginning? A being that has no limit to his power. If you think you have God figured out, you're in trouble. You may be a good, well-meaning person, but if you start believing you have a full understanding of God, you're in big trouble. If you think you know how he will act in every situation and you have a Bible verse for every situation, you will one day be in for a big surprise. No one has God figured out. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Do not fear a man or group of people or institution. Fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, one of the most common industries people believe the Illuminati own and influence is the music industry. And one of the most common questions you hear in Christian circles is, should I listen to secular music? Rather than answering this question for you, it is better that I inform you about the power of music, and then you can come to your own conclusion and answer the question, should I listen to secular music? There is a supernatural force behind music, a supernatural force that cannot be denied. A supernatural element to music that I believe we as human beings do not quite understand or fully acknowledge or know. People worship God through music, People praise God through music, and even in the occult, they sometimes channel their spirits through music and chants. There is a supernatural force behind music, a supernatural force that cannot be denied, neither cannot it be ignored. Both in the Old and the New Testaments, there are many references that points to the blatant power of music. Time and time again in the Bible, we see instances of the power of music, we observe moments where music that praises and worships God results in the Spirit of the Lord approaching the scene, or we witness the manifest presence of the Lord being revealed. You can only imagine what sort of spirits are attracted to music that speaks about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. There is a supernatural force behind music, a force that cannot be denied. We grossly underestimate the power of music. I am sure in your own personal life, you have seen how music can penetrate directly into your spirit and subconscious mind. There are songs that I have never cared to listen to, but because they are played so often in shops or public places, I end up knowing the lyrics by heart, without making any significant effort to listen to the lyrics or memorize them. You listen to a song one time, and you can find yourself humming along to it for the rest of the day. 1 Samuel 16, verse 23 says, and it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Here in this passage of scripture we see that an evil spirit was plaguing Saul, and that David's music had a profound spiritual effect of delivering him from the supernatural cause of his affliction. Looking at 1 Samuel 16, verse 2, at surface level may lead some to building a doctrine on music being the avenue for deliverance of people. However, it is important to remember that it is a basic rule of interpretation and application that we should not use one single verse to create a doctrine or to suggest what happened once must happen all the time. The incident described happened to David and Saul, but there is no indication God wants others to do the same thing. Unfortunately, there are people who have built their own ministries claiming that their particular song or music chases demons away or delivers people. The purpose of quoting this scripture is to illustrate my point that we as human beings do not fully grasp the power of music, its effects, and its scope. The departure of the evil spirit in response to the music suggests that music can have a spiritual impact potentially influencing spiritual entities and altering spiritual atmospheres. 
One thing you need to know about music is that music so, so powerful. Music is something that transcends this world. Music is something that transcends the barrier of language. Music has the power to touch the very bottom of your soul. Music has the power to move your spirit. Music has the power to pull people together and even tear them apart. There is a power in music which we cannot see with our natural mind, but we can sure feel that power with our soul and spirit. You know, I am telling the truth. Music has the power to change your mood. One song can shift your mood from being cheerful to being sorrowful. One song can remind you of the love of your life. One song can take you back to your wedding day. One song can remind you of your father or mother. One song can take you back to your childhood. One song can bring back memories of the saddest and lowest points of your life. One song can evoke emotions that you did not even know you had inside you. Just one song alone can remind you of memories you had long forgotten about. There is a power in music that we Christians take too lightly. You know I am telling the truth. Don't take music lightly. But there is always one person who says, but it's only music, or it's just songs. I recall the moving story of a woman who found solace and redemption through the power of music. She was a recovering addict struggling with the chains of her past and the constant battle against relapse. In her testimony, she shared how music became her sanctuary and her guide back to light. During the darkest periods of her addiction, she felt lost, hopeless, and disconnected from everything she once held dear. It was a choir's hymn she heard one day, almost by accident, that marked the turning point in her life. This hymn, a simple melody infused with messages of hope, forgiveness, and love, touched her in a way she had never experienced before. Every time she felt the urge to fall back into old habits, she would play this hymn. The lyrics reminded her of the possibility of a new life, a life reclaimed from the depths of despair. It was as if the music carried a divine power, wrapping her in a sense of peace and giving her strength to resist the temptations that once overpowered her. The most profound moment came when she decided to join a local church choir. Singing became her way of healing, of giving back, and reconnecting with the community. Through music, she not only found a path to recovery, but also discovered a new purpose. Her story is a testament to the transformative power of music. It illustrates how music can reach into the deepest recesses of our soul, awakening us to new beginnings and guiding us through our darkest nights. Now, I am sure you have all experienced something similar, if not identical, to this. Now think about what happens to you as an individual when you listen to songs that are busy talking about sex, lust, fornication, and adultery. Do you think songs like that are pulling you closer to the Lord or pulling you closer to the lusts of the flesh? You may wonder why you are struggling with a particular sin, but you spend all day and night listening to songs that encourage that very sin. You find people who carelessly listen to songs. They couldn't care less what the lyrics are whatsoever. They know every word of the song, but they have never stopped to think about what exactly the lyrics of that song are attempting to convey. I'm sorry to say this, but there are mainstream songs out there that actively worship the devil in their lyrics. And churchgoers actually sing these secular songs because they are catchy and have a nice beat to them. We live in an age where people now openly worship the devil in their songs. At least 20 years ago, musicians that worship the devil would attempt to hide their allegiance to Satan. Now, they don't bother. They openly tell you. They openly include the devil and demons in their music videos. As a society, we are being desensitized to these things. Growing up in the 70s, even my unbelieving friends knew not to even make jokes about worshiping the devil or even do it. Now, it is taken so lightly. If the presence of God can come where the Lord is being worshipped and exalted, who arrives when the devil is being exalted? There are even articles that I have read where people who left the occult have stated some of the music videos we see on TV are representations of occult ceremonies. And, in all honesty, that does not surprise me. Does that surprise you? I am here just to encourage you to be selective about what you listen to. Be selective about what you play in your home. 
You need to understand that the devil will do all he can to enter into the life of a person. And what I see creeping more and more into the church is, quote unquote, Christian artists that look no different from secular music. We, as the body of Christ, have been called out of the world and not to be like the world. Just because a song mentions God three times does not mean that the song is a Christian song or that the artist is a Christian artist. You need to be discerning with what music you listen to, even if it is labeled as Christian music. Is that music exalting a man or is it exalting Jesus? Just look at how one song can make you feel. Music is not only relevant on earth. It began in heaven, and it remains the only ministry that predates time and will continue to be relevant after time. At one point, preaching will cease, Bible study will end, even faith won't last forever. When we are in heaven, we won't need faith in God because we will be able to see Him as clear as day. But music, my friend, music is an eternal ministry. As you are listening to me right now, Angels are exalting, praising, and worshiping God. 